So now we want to look at magnetic materials. Uh, most materials are not able to be made into permanent magnets. However, there are a few elements like uh, iron, cobalt, and nickel that can be made into a permanent magnet. There are other elements, like the rare earth elements, such as uh, neodymium, uh, gadolinium, uh, other rare earth elements. Uh, so uh, these elements uh, that are, as the name suggests, pretty uncommon, uh, they can be made into especially strong magnets. In fact, uh, this has become a bit of a security concern since uh, nearly all of the rare earth elements are now mined in China because they are so uh, environmentally messy to mine that there's been a bit of a panic within the U.S. about finding uh, alternative sources. In any case, uh, these rare earth magnets are extremely strong, and they are critical in a lot of important technologies such as electric cars, uh, wind turbines, and radar. You'll notice that uh, all of these uh, magnetic materials are either transition metals, really uh, 3D transition metals, or they are uh, rare earth elements that have 4F electrons. So now we want to look at the microscopic structure of a magnet. So in a permanent magnet, uh, it is something called a ferromagnet. That means that all of the magnetic moments in a material uh, are aligned. So each uh, atom in iron has a magnetic moment, and in a ferromagnet, all of the atomic moments are aligned in the same direction, so the piece of iron becomes a permanent magnet. However, the uh, magnets, the uh, local magnetic moments, are not always aligned. So below that, we see what we call a magnetic material. That means that there are bits of uh, a material that are like a magnet, but they are disordered and they are pointing in all different directions. So a magnetic material has the ability to be a permanent magnet, but it isn't one right now. So a example of a magnetic material is pretty much uh, almost any kind of regular uh, iron where uh, it's not made into a magnet, but it could be made into one. So what happens if we put a, a magnetic material in a magnetic field? Remember, in a magnetic field, the north magnetic pole will all want to point along the magnetic field lines. That means now the magnetic field will have a north and south pole. So uh, that means that uh, when we put it into the uh, magnetic field, all of these local moments will uh, snap into alignment, and suddenly it becomes like a magnet. So the uh, magnetic uh, induces the alignment of the magnetic domains. So now, uh, for example, if we pick up a paperclip and put it next to a magnet, uh, it will stick because it's induced an alignment of the magnetic domains. Now, uh, iron would uh, like to make a magnet because its uh, lowest energy state is when it's in a ferromagnetic arrangement, but getting into that form can be difficult. So in order to make a permanent magnet, you heat up your iron, or probably iron oxide, and put it in a very high magnetic field and cool it down slowly. This is sort of like uh, heating and punching a steel blade, except instead of annealing to the most stable structure, you are bringing it to the most stable magnetic alignment. That allows for the iron to become a permanent magnet. In fact, uh, before industrialization, a good magnet, uh, a good, good enough to make a compass, was perhaps the most uh, valuable metal uh, in, on Earth. Uh, more expensive than, say, gold or silver, because in order for a magnet to form naturally, uh, which is, this is something that's called a lodestone, uh, it would only form when a lightning strike would hit a certain type of iron oxide mineral. So that intense heat and magnetic field uh, caused by the lightning strike uh, resulted in a small magnet, and since that's the only way it could form, literally it needed a lightning strike, so it was incredibly uh, valuable. Okay, so we have some questions. So uh, first, uh, what is attracted to the North Magnetic Pole? Well, a South Magnetic Pole, right? So uh, it's attracted since uh, opposites attract, piece of cake. Uh, next, uh, a magnetic material that has not been made into a magnet, so like a paper clip here, uh, what is it attracted to? Well, is it attracted to a North Pole? Yeah, sure. Uh, is it attracted to the South Pole? Uh, yes, also. So it's attracted because the uh, magnet induces an alignment of the magnetic domains. So uh, now it's attracted to the North Pole if it's next to a North Pole, and it's attracted to the South Pole if it's near a South Pole. So it is attracted to both. Uh, lastly, uh, we have a charged piece of cloth. Uh, I don't know, I guess we've rubbed a, a glass rod with a piece of cloth to build up a bunch of static electricity. So what happens when we put it next to a magnet? Well, nothing happens. Stationary charges do not feel magnetic fields, so our piece of cloth is attracted to neither one of the magnetic poles. So, okay, you have a few questions to answer here, and then next we're going to start to look at magnetic forces uh, more quantitatively. Good luck.